Oh, give thanks. Hallelujah. Bless you, Heavens Unlimited. We're just going to set the stage. I'm just going to give you a few scriptures. This is night 15. I ain't trying to reinvent the wheel. The wheel is turning. I'm just going to add a couple lines upon these lines, a couple precepts upon the precepts that's already been laid. Amen. Giving honor to God, who is my life? Who is my life? Giving honor to my bishop. Amen. Um, bless you, man of God. Bishop, I love you, and ain't a thing you can do about it. I was reading over some notes we did in 2002, 2004, and I would have brought them, but I don't want to tell y'all my age. I was a little girl then. <laughs> I was a little girl when. I met the great man of God, Bishop Mark C. McGuire, Sr. Amen. Who else could deal with so many women and not lose their mind? Who else would want to deal with so many women and not lose their mind? So I'm just going to give you a few little things tonight, and I pray that my bishop would be satisfied. I pray that God would be glorified, and I pray that the body of Christ would be changed. So if you just bear with me a little bit, let's go into prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, the psalmist said, what kind of man is this that thou art so mindful of him? What is it about us, God, that you decide to dethrone yourself, come down, save a wretch just like me? What is it about us, God, that... You decided to let communion be between you and me. What is it about us, God, that you said, I love him so much that I stretch wide and I'll die for him? What is it about us, God? Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for just one drop of your blood. We thank you for one more mercy. We thank you for one more renewed day of strength. We thank you, Lord God, that every morning is new mercies. You give us new strength. God, we thank you. God, we'll figure it out one day when we meet you face to face, when we'll see all the things you've done for us, God. But what is it now, God, about us that count us so worthy that you would die upon a cross, God, a death that you didn't deserve? God, we just thank you. Father, I ask that you just bless every ear, Lord God. I ask that you show them, Lord God, what is the meaning of this night, Lord God. I ask that you move them, Lord God, into purpose and destiny. I ask you, Lord God, that nobody go away discouraged, but everybody go away with their spirit encouraged, that they can move on to their next destiny in you. Now, God, be glorified in this service. And it's in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and amen. Just a couple of scriptures. Chelsea keep on telling me, why don't you write them on the pad, Bodie? I said, I like paper, I'm old. <laughs> this thing I give out, I have paper. <laughs> the lights go out, I have paper. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'm going to tell you about a couple of women in the scripture. We know that we mobilize for manifestation. Thank God for um, Minister LJ. Happy birthday to you, woman of God. <laughs> You know, either LJ is hearing from God or she got a whole bunch of time. She go home and she probably didn't tore up a whole bunch of pillows. You know, for all the stuff we give her and say crazy to her. Amen. Amen. Okay, I see I did it. See. Okay, we're going to talk about being mobilized for manifestation. Bless you, woman of God. Happy birthday. Um, we're going to go start with this one particular woman in the book of Proverbs 31. We're going to start with verse 10. Minister Charlotte, if you can give me that in the Amplified Version, please. Proverbs 31 and 10 says, A capable, intelligent, and virtuous woman, who is he who can find her? She is far more precious than jewels, and her value is far above rubies or pearls. The heart of her husband trusts in her confidently and relies on her and believes in her securely so that she has no lack of honest gain or need of dishonest spoil. She comforts, encourages, 
and does him only good as long as there is life within her. She seeks out wool and flax and works with willing hands, willing hands to develop it. She is like the merchant ships loaded with foodstuffs. She brings her household food from a far country. She rises while it's yet night and gets spiritual food for her household and assigns her maids their task. She considers a new field before she buys or accepts it. Expanded prudently and not courting neglect of her present duties by assuming other duties. She considers a new field, amen? amen? She considers a new field before she buys or accepts it, expanding prudently and not courting neglect of her present duties by assuming other duties. With her saving of time and strength, she plants fruitful vine in her vineyard. She girds herself with strength, spiritual, mental, and physical fitness for her God-given task and make her arms strong and firm. She tastes and sees that her gain from work with and for God is good. Her lamp goes not out, but it burns on continually through the night of trouble, privation, or sorrow, warring away any fear, doubt, or distrust. She lays her hand to the spindle and her hands hold the distaff. She opens her hand to the poor, yes. She reaches out her filled hands to the needy, whether in body, mind, or spirit. She fears not for the snow for her family, for all her household are doubtedly clothed in scarlet. She makes for herself coverlets, cushions, and rugs of tapestry. Her clothing is of linen, pure and fine, and of purple, such as that of the witch, the clothing of the priest, and the hallowed cloths of the temple were made. Her husband is known in the city gates. When he sits among the elders of the land, she makes fine garments and leads others to buy them. She delivers to the merchants girdles or sashes that free one up for service. Strength and dignity are in her clothing and her position is strong and secure. She rejoices over the future, the latter day or time to come, knowing that she and her family are in readiness for it. She opened her mouth in skillful and godly wisdom and on her tongue is the law of kindness, giving counsel and instruction. She looks well to how things go in her household, and the bread of idleness, gossip, discontent, and self-pity, she will not eat. Her children rise up and call her blessed, happy, fortunate, and to be envied, and her husband boasts of and praises her, saying, many daughters have done virtuously, nobly, and well with the strength of character that is steadfast in goodness, but you excel them all. Charm and grace are deceptive and beauty is vain because it is not lasting, but a woman who reverently and worshipfully fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates of the city. Tonight I'm going to show you a contrast between two women. One you know and one we're going to learn. Amen? This woman is talking about a virtuous woman who is being reverenced by her husband who has said that she have, oh, I'm sorry, you may be sitting, who has said that she have uh, uh, great wealth as far as taking care of her house or as far as doing the things that God called her to do. But there's another woman that we've been seeing peeping her head up around the church, like, you know, just, just kind of like moving throughout the church, going from pew to pew, trying to see what's going on. And that's the masculine female. This woman, this woman, is hard of hearing, I want to believe, because everything she is told, she do the opposite. So I want to say she's hard of hearing and not just blatantly rude or blatantly ignorant or blatantly disobedient. And I definitely wanna, don't want to call her rebellious because it might be some of you guys, and I definitely don't want to call you out your name. Amen. 
So we want to talk about her. We want to talk about this woman who's been at the altar, who Bishop then probably laid a gallon of oil on, who, who have cried out to God, God, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Send me Boaz. Send me my husband. Send me my man of God. Well, I have news for you. If you ever want to see if Boaz is in here, just be quiet. Be real quiet. Every woman in the house, look to a woman and say, pray for me that I know when to shut the hell up. Amen. Sometimes we just need to shut up. Amen. I said we, so I'm not talking about anybody. I'm talking about everybody. Everybody who said they're female, I'm talking to you. Because sometimes as women, and we had a discussion about that last night, sometimes we're just too mouthy. We have too much to say. We have too many points to make. And don't nobody care about your opinion. Don't nobody really care. Because when they leave you, they talk about how ignorant you are. And the men talk about, boy, boy, I'm glad I didn't say nothing to her. She about as ghetto as they come. Boaz sits in the back, and he look around, and he see us. He see us quiet in service. He see us in worship. He see us attentive when Bishop is bringing forth the word, or when somebody is bringing forth the word. He see all that, and then he get up enough nerve that after service, he run up on you and say, how did you enjoy service? And we do the other person. What? Weren't you there? God, I can't stand being bothered with people. I, I, go get a tape. So Boaz, in his horror, run the hell back out the building. So you'll wait the next time to see if Boaz is coming. Sometimes it's just best to be quiet, to know when God is speaking to you and when he's speaking to somebody else. Sometimes it's best not to have an opinion. We have an angel of the house. We don't need to. Two heads of anything got to be out of whack. Two heads on anything. Amen? And I'm just really kind of speaking to the women. Man, thank God for you coming, but I'm really kind of speaking to the women. You know why? Because we've been so messed up and so out of whack that we now have tried to be the man ourselves. Listen, I said the same thing. You know what? If it wasn't for me, my son wouldn't have grew up right because there was no man in the house and blah, blah, blah. You don't know the horror that I live trying to be a man and a woman. Something wrong with this story. Something wrong with this story. Married women, you cannot tell your husband what to do and get away with it. God ain't hearing you. Just deal with it. Just deal with it. Don't refute it. Don't write no funny notes to the bishop telling my body don't know what she's talking about. I'm just telling you what the word said. I'm just telling you what the word said. I'm just trying to get us back on the even kill. Because women, if we line up, then we won't have that drama of he said, she said. We won't put gray hairs on a man that don't have hair. We won't give Bishop so much drama. We'll start learning to shut up and be submissive. It's not always easy, but it's never impossible. The Bible says Jesus suffered death of the cross, and he spoke not a word. Us, we got something to say. We always have something to say. My mother ran the house. My mother did the, Your mother ran a house. I believe that. But let me tell you something. If we be truthful, every woman that had to, have, had to be the head of the house suffered so much drama in her life. It's so much easier if we can sit back and bring the feminine back to the female. If we can sit back and say, God, you know what? I don't want to run the household. I want the household to be ran by my husband. I want to relax. I want to come home and everything's okay. I don't want to try to tell him what to do. I want him to tell me what to do, and I want to relax in that thing. God ain't going to send Boaz to Boaz. God ain't no freak. Trust me, God will never send Boaz to another Boaz. And if you all that much of a man, you will be single and very, I mean, very disappointed. It's not that God don't want us to be married, but God ain't going to challenge you. He ain't going to walk up and going to challenge you. Are you ready to quit? Are you ready to quit? God don't do that. He give you this, and you roll with it, or you stay by yourself. It's not even hard. I thought about it, and I thought, you know... If I be honest with myself, I was having a conversation with Cynthia today. I said, if I be honest with myself, it's harder for me to have my opinion because then I have to make sure it turn out. Amen? It's harder for me to try to do it my way because then I got to make sure it work. I'd rather put that pressure on him. I'd rather put the pressure on him. Why? Because then I can see God work through him. 
The Bible said that the head of the woman is the man. I'm going to tell y'all like Bishop said, I know y'all ain't going to help me up in here. Because half of y'all still want to be the man of your house. And that's why you don't have a man. And it's okay. It's okay. You ain't the first one, you won't be the last one. 1 Corinthians 11, 3, um, woman of God, it says, but I want you to know and realize that Christ is the head of every man. The head of a woman is her husband, and the head of Christ is God. There has to be order. Look, this message hit me long before it hit you. I tried to come up with something else slick because this, you know, I'm over 50. I have my opinion, but that's all it is, mine. My husband don't have to abide bad. He don't have to live bad. He really don't have to hear it. But by the mercy of God, he'll listen. And that's far as it go. I heard Elder Baxter talk last night about temper tantrum. Boy, have I had plenty. We have did so much to try to manipulate God and manipulate our husbands. If he don't do this, I wouldn't do that. If he do that 50 million times, you still have no right to do that. You tell yourself and ask yourself what that is. Amen. Just going to say amen and don't look around at nobody. Nobody will notice you. We can just stand here and act like we're talking about um, tabernacle, not the potter's house. We're talking about somebody else. God has designed order. And if you don't follow order, you'll follow something else. The Bible said who you surrender your members to, that's who you'll become servants of. Amen? Amen? Amen. So if you surrender your members to always trying to be, um, you know, the boy in the house, the man in the house, just because we wear pants don't make us the man. You know, it's, it's a funny thing. Um, my husband was ordained on Valentine's Day three years ago, and God used a woman to do it. She still had no opinion. Isn't that something? It's a funny thing. I ordained him, but they call him Pastor Bodie. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. And at first I thought, hold on, God. Hold on. And God took me right back to the scripture. And I realized something. I said, you know, I had many conversations with Bishop in which I enjoy. I absolutely enjoy, even the times when I thought he wasn't being fair, but amen. But I realized something, that when you have a man that would denounce himself, that would stay home and be Mr. Mom, we have lost the battle. If we want to do a feminine movement, let's fight to bring feminine back. Let's fight to bring the woman back in the house. Let's fight to bring us back raising our children. Let's get these latchkey kids off the shelf and pull them back in the home. Let's be there when our babies come home and fix them lunch, fix them breakfast, fix them dinner. And everybody looking at me like, well, you know what? What about people who have to work? What about it? Get off early. Work part time. Quit let the system raise our kids because we want our own money. I can tell you some things I did with my own money that wasn't sanctified, that wasn't right and nothing else, but God, but God. Now I'm begging God, please God, let this man tell me I can stay home. I'm so tired. I don't want to work. When the winter come, I slide from Dayton all the way to Centerville looking like buckwheat like this, scared to drive the ice. I'm sliding up the hill. Who like that? What woman like to do that? To be in constant fear. I can hear it in my spirit. I drive a truck and, you know, I don't do all that stuff in this land. Ice is ice is ice. You, unless you're an Eskimo, the ice is hard to handle. It's hard to handle. It's hard to deal with that, that intensity that we feel inside when our car is swerving and you're trying to figure out, did they say, go with the car swerve or go against the swerve or should I just hold on to the steering wheel? That's what we do. And that's okay because that's the feminine side of us, not emotional wrecks. Not emotional wrecks. Amen. 
the feminine side of us. Boaz for, is looking for a woman who's not so stubborn that she know when to give up. A woman that is so meek she know when to shut up. A woman that's not so rebellious that she won't always have to be the one to try to get up, have an opinion, challenge what he say, tell everybody, I know you heard what the bishop said, but. There is no but. There is no but. We know our place. And it's so easy to be in. It's so easy for a female to be a female when you be opposite of that. That's when it become hard. It's cute to dress up. It's cute to put on makeup. It's cute to adorn yourself. It's hard when you have to turn your cap to the side and wear jeans and, and tape yourself up trying to look like something you ain't. It's still true. If you don't say amen, it's still true. That's one thing about the word. God never, ever, ever told us to look for amen. He probably didn't want us to get our feelings hurt. Because church people will truly let you down if you're waiting for them to make you feel a certain way. Why? Because we're determined to rebel. And let me tell you something, which is rebellion is just a spirit of witchcraft. If you absolutely going against everything that the man of God is saying, I guarantee you that you should just go on and get your pointy hat not wait till Halloween and just go in your witch wardrobe because that's what you're standing as. The scriptures say you as in witchcraft. What's the purpose of being in witchcraft? To have your opinion? To be lonely? To grow old by yourself? Why be a witch when you can be a real woman? Why do that? Why give whoever your, your, your pastor, your preacher, your priest, why give him all that hell when you can just sit back and relax? He the one got to get a word from God. All we got to do is come in here and soak it up. He the one got to hear from God. He the one got to run the church. If the lights get cut off, I ain't got to pay it. He the one got to do it. So why not just sit back and relax? Why not sit back and enjoy being cute? Why not celebrate who you are instead of trying to defy it? Why trying to look like something you weren't supposed to be? I don't care if my car ain't paid for it, so if y'all hit it with something, the insurance just gonna fix it. So I really don't care. Isaiah said in Isaiah 55 and 11 in the Amplified version. It says, So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void. For the head of the woman is the man. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void. For the head of the woman is the man. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void without producing any effect or useless, but it shall accomplish that which I please and purpose, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I was sent. Now maybe, just maybe, it wasn't sent to you. So maybe there's no accomplishment in your life. Maybe there's no purpose for your life. Whatever you think about yourself tonight, I'm telling you there is. I'm not going to debate with you about it. You have to look at this word for yourself. I'm not going to tell you that, you know, what your pastor said is wrong. I'm telling you what the Bible said is right. Every woman has value. Every woman has the propensity to be a Proverb 31 woman. Every woman. I should have said, man of God, John, wouldn't you like a Proverbs 31 woman? See? He didn't take no time to correct that. But I say every woman has the propensity to be a Proverbs 31 woman. Y'all go, I'm not cleaning for him. I'm not going to get up and cook for him, and you'll be lonely. You make up your mind what you want to be. That's all we have to do. We have to make up our mind what we're going to be. There was a um, young lady in the scriptures, really, really, really great story. I think I read about four times just to see exactly what God was speaking to her. 
and that was Sister Esther. Esther was given a lot of favor. She ended up inside the palace. She was given maids and stuff like that. And then the, the deal was that she would get in there and she would be the one that would cause the king to rewrite what he had wrote so that the Jews wouldn't be annihilated. I believe at some point Esther got a little comfortable, amen. Esther may have said, you know, I got mine, you get yours. You know, maybe Esther had that type of mentality. But one thing I do know, that the man of God spoke to her and said, hold on, uh-uh. Don't think that because you're on the inside, God won't use somebody else. Don't think because you're Cynthia Bodie today that there won't be another Miss Bodie tomorrow. Don't think that God won't change the heart of your spouse because you want to act a fool and he don't have to have a fool. It's called divorce. Don't think that you're the only one that God can use to satisfy him. Don't think that God won't change her and put her with him, another her. I think myself to be all that. Amen. We're supposed to think that. Not more highly than I ought to, but I got to be good of myself and love myself in order to love you. You don't want me to hate me because I hate you too. So we're supposed to think of ourselves. We're supposed to get up in the morning and wash ourselves. We're supposed to love ourselves, and then we're supposed to love our neighbor. But let me tell you something. I want the first Miss Bodie. I want the first Miss Bodie. There was a Miss Bodie before me. And there's a thin line that if my foolishness don't cease, there'll be a Miss Bodie after me. <laughs> Unless your husband was a virgin when you met him, you weren't the first. Amen. 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 And there's one thing I notice about men that's different from us. We'll fight. We'll try to keep it together. We'll just keep saying, I do this, I do this, just do this and do this. When he do it, I'm done with you. And he gone. You know why? Because God made him the head, and he ain't going to deduce himself to try to be what he ain't. We'll try to wear two hats, three hats, whatever it takes to get what we want. And God is saying, bring it back down. I put my word out there. I can't change my word. And it won't come back to me void. But what I can do, I won't let her pimp the fact that you love her. I can just ease her out the way. And by the time people look up, there'll be another Miss Bodie. Amen, anyhow. It's still the truth. Esther, let me get back to her. I love her to death. Esther figured that if Mordecai was really going to be bugging her and bugging her, and she's telling him, look, he haven't even called for me. Maybe I did something wrong. He don't like me no more. But the king haven't held out his scepter. I can't just go into the king. I die. And Mordecai tripped. You ain't safe no way. If you annihilate the Jews, Jew, you die too. So you might as well be the first one to go if we're going to go. So Esther said, okay, 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 fast. Y'all just call a fast for me because I'm going to the king. I'm going. I'm scared, but I'm going. And Esther realized one thing. She said, you know what? If I perish, just let me perish. I'd rather die doing this woman thing than to die to try to make my husband do the woman thing. I'd rather die being feminine than trying to live a life of being masculine. This tie is irking me to no end. I don't know how men wear this. It feel like somebody got a string around my neck. I feel like taking this thing off and swinging it. <laughs> I didn't even know how to tie it. I came here, I said, Elder Rock, can you tie this tie? This is not my apparel. This belongs to Mr. Bodie. Amen. I'm just saying, it is, it's irritating to me. If y'all weren't here, if I could have got it off before me and Chelsea walked up here, I would have flipped this thing. But it kind of went around with the masculine female that I was trying to tell you about. 
I really wasn't talking about in dress. I was talking about our attitude, how we respond to our husband, how we act when the man of God says something, how we act when another man in the church says something. A man is a man is a man. Now I'm going to put a disclaimer out here. And I'm parked right there. Just in case y'all have to take it out of my rag. There's not a woman that I've ever met that can really whoop a man. So all y'all that's thinking that, if he get on my nerve, I'm going to bust him in his mouth. Unwind that tape. Unwind that tape because that tape will lead you to getting your face busted. And we're too cute. That tape will lead you to jump up in your husband's face when he ain't in the mood for that and he have to take you and gather up your shirt in the middle. That kind of stuff leads us to telling our young women, you know what, don't let no man tell you what to do. Yes, you do. Let a man tell you what to do. Yeah. Make him responsible for what he told you to do. If my husband told me to dig a garden in the rain, I'm going to do it. If I get a cold, guess whose fault it is? He is. God will hold him accountable. But I'm not going to sit there and have no hour conversation about what I ain't going to do. Come on, women. We can do better. We don't have to rip and run and rip and run and chup, 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 like a bunch of little uncontrollable rats causing more havoc in the church than the devil. It ain't the devil. It's the females in the church. Quit. Kick back, relax, enjoy being a woman. Come on, Minister Charlie, I talk to you. Give me 1 Corinthians 11, 14 and 40, please, sweetie. I love Minister Charlotte. I ain't kidding, I do. If she would let me stay in her house, I probably would, because she can cook. She can cook. She can set up a serious party, y'all. I'm not kidding. I mean a serious one. First Corinthians 14 and 40. It's that scripture that everybody get confused on. It says, but all things should be done with regard to decency and propriety and in an orderly fashion. How hard is that sometimes? Amen. It only becomes hard when we try to do it opposite of what it is. You know, I had to buy four tires, I thought, and, and I didn't consult my husband. And, you know, I called myself, I was going to do this thing by myself. So I went out to NTB, and the man told me, he said, you came by two you have to buy four. Well, we had just put tires on there, but the first two in the front was wore out. So I said, oh, okay. He said, well, you have to buy four. And I thought, okay. I said, I'm going to surprise Albert when I get home. I'm going to have four new tires. <laughs> so I asked him, what was a good tire? And he said, Michelin. So I said, okay, well, give me four of your Michelin. He said, okay, that'd be 980. <laughs> And I had already put my foot in my mouth. So I said, oh, okay. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, my God. So I pay for the tires, and I get home, and the car is just bumping. Bum, 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 bum. And I'm going, these are four new tires. So I go in there, and I say, Albert, I said, um, I want to buy some tires. I said, but there seemed to be something wrong with them. He said, where are the two that was on the back? Wasn't nothing wrong with them. I said, but the man said, you can't buy two. You have to buy four. And my husband has little humor. He said, he said, if they sold one and a half and that's what you need, you buy one and a half. <laughs> I said, well, amen. So I'm telling him about this bumping in it. So he test driving. He said, I hear it. So NTB called me. He said, uh, Miss Bodie, he said, we called to tell you that there was a lug wrench or something that you take the tires off, left up under your hood. So now I'm thinking, oh, I gotta tell my husband this. I said, well, honey, let's lift up the hood to see if something's under there. <laughs> you know, because now I gotta humble myself because not only did I do something I shouldn't have did, I don't know nothing about tires. 
I don't know nothing about brands. I hear what people say, and I go with it. So we lifted up, and there were some tools. He said, Cynthia, who did this? And I said, well, MTB. <laughs> I said, baby, they're world known. I said, everybody go to them. He said, look, tomorrow when I get off work, meet me out there. And I thought to myself, God, if you could do anything for me. <laughs> Make my husband work late. Let him oversleep or something. And so we went out there, and I had Sister Linda with me. And I was so embarrassed because I know how my husband is. He just walked right out the car, walked right past me, and told me, go get my wife tires. <laughs> And I said, well, honey, I said, Look, that was yesterday. I don't think they still have them. He said, who's the manager? He said, uh, you. Go get my wife tires from out back where you put them. And so he said, well, okay, sir, they're out here. And they get out there, uh, my husband and the manager. And he said, I think somebody already sent them away. He said, I bet they did. He said, man, look, don't try to play on my wife because she was by herself. She needed two tires, and you sold her four. The man told me that your car would hydroplane if you just bought two. So all I could think of is coming down the road on my car in the air. So I bought four. I know y'all wouldn't have did that. Some people wouldn't look deeper. I didn't. And so Albert told me, he said, listen, he said, um, my wife got some tools up under her hood. What's wrong with that? He said, yeah. He said, we called her and told her that there was left in there. And I'm behind him going. Oh. And so he looked at me, he goes, Cynthia, you knew about it? And I said, well, yeah, he called. <laughs> and you know, the devil always try to make you mad when you got people around you. So I really can't act ignorant because I got Sister Linda with me, right? And the only reason we went out there, again, is because we coming from the store and some goes, Skeek! and I thought, ooh, whose car is that? Sister Linda said, that would be yours. <laughs> I said, honey, the devil do lie. I got four brand new tires. She said, and now you need brakes. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, I hate the devil. I hate him. I'm bragging to her. I got my little S on my chest. I done bought a thousand dollars worth of tires and made my husband mad. But I know Sister Linda don't know nothing about that because this screeching, I thought it was somebody else. And it was me. Not only did I need tires, I need brakes. They probably thought, we're going to milk this one right here for everything she got. Why? Because I didn't consult my husband. I ended up going out there seven times to get brakes and get burnt with $1,000 worth of tires when I could have just kicked back, tossed my husband the keys, went and let him get me tires. <laughs> Amen. For the head of every woman is who? Amen. For the head of every woman is who? Amen. 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 We're going to be a blessing to Bishop. We're going to stop being a burden. Amen. Right? Amen. We're going to try anyway. There's one more scripture I want to give you, and we out of here. Charlotte didn't give me the sign. I just love her. <laughs> and it's First Peter. Chapter 3 in the Amplified Charlotte. First Peter chapter 3, starting with verse 1, it says, In like manner, you married women, be submissive to your own husband, subordinate yourselves as being secondary to and dependent on them and adapt yourselves to them so that even if oh, <laughs> y'all pray me through this <laughs> woo uh, <laughs> woo <laughs> hallelujah <laughs> It's like one of them invisible altar calls. <laughs> it says, in like manner, uh, you married women, be submissive to your own husbands. Subordinate yourselves as being secondary to and dependent on them and adapt yourselves to them 
so that even if they don't obey the word of God, that they may be won over, <laughs> not by discussion, <laughs> but by the godly lives of their wives. <laughs> When they observe the pure and modest way in which you conduct yourselves together with your reverence for your husbands, you are to feel for him all that reverence includes to respect, defer to, revere him, ooh, to honor, esteem, appreciate, prize, and in the human sense, to adore him, that is, to admire, praise, be devoted to, deeply love, and enjoy your husband. Amen. We're going to back it up and we're going home. Take me back to 1 Corinthians 11.3, uh, Minister Charlotte. I want to end with this because I want us to be real clear. I don't want nobody to be disgusted about this. I really want you to enjoy yourselves and, and enjoy your feminine lives because it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. I think God made us beautiful. Who else but God could look at all of us and say it's good? Who else but God? And we know our secret stuff and he still said it's good. He didn't expose our stuff. He just wrote it, let us read it, and let us run with it. 1 Corinthians 11.3 says, But I want you to know and realize that Christ is the head of every man. The head of the woman is her husband, and the head of Christ is God. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing, but mostly to the doing of his word. Amen. 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 <laughs> and amen. <laughs> Bless the Lord on my soul. I love 52 Days of Restoration because you never know what you're going to get. I'm 